From the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, this is Carolina Week. have a uh, genuine drama going on as to who the next president of the United States will be. At this point, we have an administration in place that's functioning, and in no way, shape, or form is there any diminution in the strength of the United States or our ability to conduct foreign relations at this point. And I need to underscore that because it's been raised by so many people recently. The government is intact, but the decision about who will be leading the federal government for the next four years could come down to a few people in this building, the justices of the Florida Supreme Court. Good evening, and thanks for joining us for the November 15th edition of Carolina Week. I'm Bridget Williams. And I'm Katie Perry. We're proud to be bringing you coverage of Carolina news and events and important news of the day. This has been a very strange week. It seems so simple. You cast a ballot, it gets counted, and there's a winner. Not in these elections, though. It looks like, in the end, the courts will decide how we will find out who the next president is. Suits have been filed by Democrats, by Republicans, and by the voters. They're contesting everything. When the hand recounts should finish, whether there should be recounts at all, whether people voted for the candidates they thought they voted for, and even whether one must punch a hole completely, or maybe just a little, to really cast a vote. While the courts figure out a way out of this mess, the rest of us will just have to sit and wait. It's been more than a week since the nation voted for the next president of the United States, but with the controversy surrounding the ballot in Florida, we might not know the outcome of this election for days. In our Speak Out segment today, people here at Carolina offered their opinions about the political process in action. I think it's very discouraging for a lot of people that have voted, um, especially for the minorities, because it seems like there's something going on, like there's a conspiracy. The most important thing is that votes get counted in a responsible and uh, efficient manner. I think it shouldn't go on too long, but I think the American people are more patient than the media might be representing. Because it's too close to call, I think they should try to do whatever's best so it's, it'll be fair. But um, but they also need to get it done with. Uh, I don't see how we can go forward with uh, a new president either way uh, until some, some of this has been uh, clarified. Uh, I think the whole thing should be changed around so this doesn't happen again anymore. It's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's just a shame that something has to happen like this. Many Americans are glued to their television sets to keep tabs on this sticky situation. Our sample is in no way scientific and shouldn't be taken as a reflection of widespread opinions on campus. Every year, more students attend UNC Chapel Hill, and more students means more cramped living quarters on campus, but maybe not for long. Construction crews are digging and dumping dirt to begin building the answer to future housing problems. There will be 900 new beds in four new residence halls on South Campus by May 2002. Housing revenue bonds will fund the $42 million cost of the dorms. The dorms will be four stories high at most and will have suite style bedrooms. All rooms will be air conditioned with cable TV and internet access. Public safety officials say temporary loss of parking spaces will be the biggest problem. Residents of South Campus may have to park at alternate locations until construction is complete. No signs of the tragedy exist today, but six years ago, fire destroyed UNC's Phi Gamma Delta House, killing five students. Many people in Chapel Hill still remember the accident that might have been prevented if the house had had a sprinkler system. That's why Kappa Alpha and other fraternities are getting makeovers to make them safer. All houses must install sprinkler systems by fall of 2001 or face being shut down. KA is all but starting from scratch, while others are improving what they already have. Sprinklers cost nearly $60,000. The KA House will have sprinklers installed this summer to meet the deadline. There's a student at UNC Chapel Hill in a high-profile, powerful position, but most people on campus don't even know her name. And it's safe to say students would like this person to remain unknown to them. Carolina Week's Angie McKinney has more. It's closed. 
person. This is who you will have to face if you are ever accused of violating the honor code at UNC Chapel Hill. Honor code cases are tried by student juries, but before the case ever gets to court, they go through the student attorney general. Taylor Lee makes important decisions about the future of students who attend this university. Lee says making hard decisions is one of the demanding parts of her job. I am the individual that charges the students, and so a lot of times they perceive me as the bad guy, or, or the DTH perceives me as the bad guy, and that's sort of rough on, on the sort of self-esteem and just, you know, personal self-image. Student Attorney General staff member Chris Brooks says dealing with angry students makes Lee's job very difficult. Working early in the morning, working late at night sometimes, uh, and having to deal with people who are not particularly pleased to see you on a day-to-day -day basis having to work very hard to get in touch with people who don't want to get in touch with you. Even though Lee has been criticized heavily this year, primarily because of one situation involving collaboration on a group project, staff member Valerie Alter had only good things to say about the student yeah, attorney general. I mean, she's really funny and she's really easygoing, but at the same time, you know, if, there's, if we screw up, we're going to hear it, which is the way it should be. But she's not, you know, picky or overbearing. Being student attorney general requires That's that Lee devote countless Next hours to her job. This year, Taylor Lee spends a lot of her time in this office, influencing the lives of college students. But next year, she hopes to spend her time influencing a younger variety of students. Lee is hoping to participate um, in the Teach for America program next year. Why teaching? Um, because it's as far away from being student attorney general as absolutely possible. <laughs> Yet Lee hasn't given up on the idea of one day becoming a lawyer. She's already gotten some on-the-job training. In Chapel Hill, I'm Angie McKinney. Lee will graduate in May of 2001 with a degree from the School of Public Health. And then for her own health, she'll probably take some time off. Listen up, college students. You can throw away all those ramen noodles and frozen pizzas. Coming up, I'll take you on a grocery store tour with a local dietitian when Carolina Week continues. I wonder how Silent Sam feels about guarding the university from groups of third grade kids. Maybe he's lost interest. We haven't heard his rifle fire recently. Still he stands, a steadfast defender of something. What is it? No one knows the real Carolina like a student. Carolina Week, the student news show. What services come to mind when you think of the American Red Cross? The Red Cross does blood drives, don't they? They help out with natural disasters. Giving blood. Tornadoes and hurricanes. Blood. Natural disasters. I'll bet you didn't know that the American Red Cross also provides emergency services for military families and delivers health and safety instruction in first aid, lifeguard training, and CPR. Contact your local Red Cross chapter to learn more about the services they provide. Stores are stocking up for Thanksgiving, but even when we aren't in the midst of a holiday season, grocery shopping is a chore for most of us. Shopping healthy and on a budget makes the job harder to tackle. But I found out recently there's a new opportunity to educate yourself before you hit the grocery aisles to shop. The UNCCH Center for Healthy Student Behaviors is giving grocery store tours to educate people about healthy shopping. Registered dietitian and tour guide Dale Monroe says many college students could use a tour of the grocery store. The students that were coming to see me, they had not had the opportunity to shop for themselves before. Um, they always had their parents fixing meals and shopping for them and so when they come to college they have a lot of questions about how to eat healthy and so I thought it would be an opportunity to take them through and kind of show them some healthy meal choices. Katie Show says the tour showed her some new things. I learned about um, the different kinds of fats and which ones are good for you and which ones are bad and um, just basically more about foods that I haven't really tried before. Charles Streeter says the tour could benefit anyone. You know, from going through the grocery store and looking at the different things that you buy and finding out, you know, how to look at the labels, how to read the labels, how to make a more balanced choice in what you eat. For students on a budget, Monroe pointed out some healthy yet affordable options. Two tips for any shopper are to always bring a list and never shop on an empty stomach. 
Members of various Tar Heel sports teams have also taken the tours, but Monroe says the idea is good for all of us, not just athletes. There will be more tours next semester. If you'd like more information about a grocery store tour, contact Dale Monroe at 966-6586 or email her at dmonroe at email.unc.edu. It's time to go into training. Stretch your stomachs and train your eyes because there's turkey to eat and football to watch. Thanksgiving is less than a week away and I found out what people are doing to get ready. Thanksgiving is a time of family, fun, and preparation. Some people have lots to do, like cooking. Uh, turkey with stuffing, as a bread stuffing, usually, and we have sweet potatoes, and we have white potatoes, and we have string beans, plain string beans. Some people chip in a little. And are you cooking? No, I'm bringing turnips, though. And some have it easy. Just waiting for somebody to invite me to go somewhere. But no matter what the shoppers are up to, grocery stores are stocking up on the traditional turkeys. Six pallets this high. We have more coming every day. And other favorites. And shelter kitchens like the IFC shelter on Rosemary Street are feeding people and offering a service opportunity. But we have a lot of, a lot of people that want to do just one-time volunteer opportunities. So. so whether you're traveling. We're driving down to Florida. Or home for the holidays. Just big family gathering, watch some football, drink some beers. Have a safe, happy Thanksgiving. As we all know, the holidays are a big party time and a big travel time. Carolina Week reminds you not to drink and drive. Local businesses are doing their part to help feed the hungry as we make plans for Thanksgiving. Spanky's Restaurant in Chapel Hill is just one of the restaurants to donate 10% of its Thursday, Tuesday night profits to the fight against hunger. The fundraiser called RSVVP is expected to raise more than $20,000 through donations from local eateries to go to the Interfaith Council Homeless Shelter this year. Restaurants in Wake and Durham counties also participated. The Carolina men's soccer team brings home the ACC title, something that hasn't happened for quite some time. We'll have that coming up in sports. And who let the cold weather out? Weathercasty Kelly Weathercaster Kelly Mahoney has the chilly weekend forecast when Carolina Week continues. What would Probably you do if your mother asked for you? So class, tell me, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, that's right. Yes, Molly? I want to be a supermodel when I grow up. How about you, Josh? I want to be a cowboy when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't anybody want to be a designated driver when they grow up? A what? What could you do with the free hour of your day? Take a jog, wash your car, bake a cake, or watch TV. Ever thought about giving blood? It only takes an hour. It saved my life. Someday it may save yours. A single pint of blood can save three lives. Be a hero. Give blood. Throughout my career as a coach, I've lived by the simple axiom that behind every individual success story is a team. The success of Durham Public Schools does not depend on one of us, but all of us. Through community involvement and support, we can take a giant step in helping our children achieve their hopes and dreams. You're going to walk with me, and I'm going to have you to do that great soccer ball. Great. <laughs> That'd be funny. I don't know about you guys, but I had to pull out my coat and sweater this morning. Yep. Let me tell you, it's been cold. It has been cold. It's been very cold. Um, and I'll tell you what, something that a lot of us don't think about when the cold weather kicks in is that in the middle of November, we are still in the middle of hurricane season, believe it or not. Mm. So my weather question this week has to do with the end of hurricane season. Appropriately, my question for you is, the latest um, hurricane was formed on which date? Your choices are November 11th, November 26th, December 24th, or December the 30th. I'll give you a few minutes to think about that one. But getting back to that cold weather we were talking about before, we walked around outside today and got to see everybody got out some extra layers over the last couple of days. Sweaters and jackets began to make their appearance on the Carolina campus. 
and we'll see if this cold weather is going to stick around for the weekend. But first, I want to get back to the subject of our weather question. And that is the 2000 Atlantic hurricane season. He, um, in a brief summary, uh, if you can believe it, this is actually the third most active hurricane season that we've ever had. It ties some other years for that record, but we have actually had 14 named storms, eight of which became hurricanes, three of which were actually major hurricanes with winds at 111 miles per hour or more. Now the reason we might not realize this was the most active hurricane season, or the third most active, excuse me, was that only two made U.S. landfall, Gordon and Helene, on the Gulf Coast. So, um, but taking a look out right now, you can see there is nothing going on in the tropics. In fact, it's a pretty simple weather map. We only have one simple cold front, pushing through the Midwest, and that cold front is gonna give us a chance for some precipitation early Friday morning. And as the day clears out on Friday, we are looking at a pretty clear weekend. So let's take a look at those numbers for your Carolina week four-day forecast. Like I said, chance for a morning shower on Friday, but clearing out as the day goes on. Saturday and Sunday do look good, partly sunny to mostly sunny skies, but cooler temperatures. Highs just in the 40s, lows dipping down to 29 on Saturday, and a chilly 26 on Sunday. If you're heading out to the beach or the mountains this weekend, the beach does look like it'll be your best bet as sunny skies prevail and temperatures are warmer than they will be here, 55 on Saturday and 57 on Sunday. Now the mountains do look like they're going to see some good weather, but chillier than here, a low of 25 degrees on Saturday, so it'll be chilly. Now if you were planning on staying around for the game this weekend, maybe heading over to Duke to see the Tar Heels take on um, Duke the game time is going to be at 12 noon with a chilly game time temperature of just 46 degrees. So bring out your sweater and your coat as you cheer the team on. Chilly. Definitely, <laughs> I mean, definitely. Exciting game too. <laughs> yeah. So getting back to some tropical weather, which we might be praying for by the end of the weekend, when do you think the latest Atlantic hurricane was formed? Um, I'm going to guess mid-November just to be on the safe side. I have no idea. So it's like 24th. Well, it was definitely a long time ago. In December of 1954, Hurricane Alice formed on December the 30th. So the answer was D, actually. Hurricane that late. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks Amazing. a lot. You're welcome. Thanks. Carolina's football team hopes to shore up its Christmas Bowl plans this weekend versus arch rival Duke. And the Heels swimming team is at the midway point. We'll have a preview and a review of their season. Carolina Week's Devin Bigness is next with sports. I need a break. Yeah, well, what I need is a little peace and quiet when I come home. I've been working hard all day. You have got to do something about that son of yours. I can't stand it anymore. Well, maybe if you were a better mother, he wouldn't be such a problem. Better mother? When do you ever spend time with him? Family Counseling Service of Durham. We can help. Call 286-3757. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have ignition. We have liftoff. Join the next mission aboard the Moorhead Planetarium. For more information on Sky Rambles, call 549-6863. Men's soccer did it again. It was a pretty exciting game this past Sunday. I, great to watch, too. Good-looking group of guys. <laughs> when, you, when you think of soccer dominance at UNC, you probably think of the women's team. But the men's team with a chance to make it a clean sweep for both the men and women in the ACC tournament. The Heels trying to win their first ACC tournament since 1987, taking on the Wahoos from UVA. Scoreless for all of regulation, and then just seven seconds into overtime, a little give and go between Caleb Norcus and Mike Busey. Back to Caleb. Caleb with the scissor kick, the championship. I can read his lips. He's not saying, hi, mom. It was such a sweet goal. We're going to show it to you again in slow-mo. Caleb just straight blowing it up. Carolina wins and clinches the number one seed in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Caleb says this one was pretty special. It was the biggest game of my life, you know, uh, up to this point. I, I hope I keep going with soccer. Um, but uh, it, was, it was so great to connect with uh, Busey. You know, we, we've been playing together for so long, and, um, and our whole team just, I think, I think we really deserve this today. 
Swim teams from all around the nation will descend upon Chapel Hill this weekend to take on our nationally ranked swimming and diving teams. Carolina Week's Brad Klein has a preview. The Carolina swimming and diving teams are looking to add the finishing touches to an outstanding first half of the season this weekend. The 15th annual Nike Cup swimming is being held at the Coy Natatorium in Chapel Hill. The meet is considered the halfway point for both the 9th ranked women's team and 22nd ranked men's team. After both teams opened the year with tough losses to national power Georgia, the women have won three straight against Rice, Michigan, and Duke, while the men upset Minnesota and easily defeated Duke. Men's try captain Seth Laughlin says the victory should help the team going into the Nike Cup. So it's important to us uh, that we beat a big team just to get our confidence going. I mean, they were seventh in the country, so, you know, that's no joke. The meet is formatted in exactly the same way that both the ACC and NCAA championships will be run. There are 20 events spread over three days with preliminaries and finals each day. About 15 other teams are expected to compete in the meet, including nationally ranked Louisiana State, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, and North Carolina State. Women's team co-captain Katie Hathaway says the meet format should provide the Atari Hills with an excellent opportunity to improve. Um, well, for most of the team, it's just a good chance to get in and still make real good races against a bunch of swimmers. Carolina hopes that it will have a better gauge of where it stands at both the conference and national levels after this weekend. If things go as well in the Nike Cup as they have so far this season, both teams will be well positioned for the second half of the season and beyond. In Chapel Hill, I'm Brad Klein. Carolina week. Following the Nike Cup, the Heels return to action December 2nd versus Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. If you're planning to make Christmas plans thinking that Carolina won't go to a bowl game this year, don't make that reservation quite yet. Following a win against Maryland, the Heels are just a win away from a possible bowl berth. First half offensively, not really all that exciting. You're looking at the only offensive highlight for the game, a 42-yard long chip shot by Jeff Reed to give Carolina a 3-0 lead. Then Maryland finds the end zone as Julian Gary goes to the dark side with a six-yard strike. Rams, as you can see, needing a fourth-quarter snack, and the heels would come back. Curry calls his own number, and he's off to the races. He fights his way into the end zone, and the heels go on to win this one 13-10 in an offensive barn burner. And the heels just now need to beat arch-rival in 0-10 Duke to reach the magic number of six wins to qualify for bowl consideration. Carl Torber says he could get used to this whole winning thing. For two weeks in a row, in the fourth quarter, about midway through, we made the plays on the drives when we had to make them to win the ball game. The season for the men's basketball team is officially underway. The first regular season games of the Matt Doherty era were part of the NABC Classic in the Dean Dome. The Tar Heels win the Classic Championship with victories against Winthrop and Tulsa to begin the season 2-0. In the tournament opener against Winthrop, Coach D wastes no time setting his example of aggressive leadership from the bench. He gets teed up for getting all rowdy just six minutes into the game. UNC struggles early but escapes with a 66-61 victory. Freshman Brian Speedy Morrison and junior Chris Lang lead the Carolina effort with 14 points each. In the championship game versus Tulsa, the Tar Heels play like more like themselves with the big guns having really big games, giving UNC a 91-81 win. Sophomore Joseph Forte blows it up for 38 points, and center Brendan Haywood pitches in with 24 points and 11 blocks for the two-day tournament. Next up for the Heels, a trip to Appalachian State on Friday. Well, it's always nice to get those two wins under the young coach's belt, you know, establish some confidence with the Carolina fans. And they'll have Max Owens back on Friday, so... Should be exciting. Oh, yeah, Appalachian better watch out. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> <Devin>. Max. <laughs> you see the final product each week, but it takes a lot of hard work to get this show on the air. When Carolina Week returns, we'll show you exactly what goes behind the scenes. Increasing cloud for. <laughs> UNC TV, your remote stops here. One out of 20 people in the United States has been infected with hepatitis C. Two billion people in the world have had hepatitis B in their lifetime. 80% of newborns that are infected with hepatitis B are likely to have it for life. More people are infected with hepatitis B than HIV. Many people have it and don't know it. 
There is no cure yet, but it is preventable, and there is support and treatment. For more information, visit our webpage or email us at info at hepfee.org. As soon as one edition of Carolina Week is over, we start planning for the next week. It takes a lot of people and a lot of time to put on a newscast, even when it's only once a week. We wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at all the activity and sometimes mayhem associated with Carolina's student news show. <laughs> And that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thank you for joining us, and be sure to come back next time. Until then, have a good week. Good night. If you have a story idea, contact Carolina Week at 843-8292 or carolinaweek at unc.edu. If you have questions or concerns about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365, UNCCH, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27599.